Garage Band on M1 Max is amazing. Blazing fast, super responsive, and this little shit hasn't made a single appearance. Having said that, there is still quite a lot of uncertainty surrounding third-party plugins and whether or not they work with the Apple-optimized version of GarageBand. In the last M1 Mac video, I went through all of the instrument plugins I had installed to check which worked and which didn't, with some surprising results. This time around, I'm going through all of the effect plugins that I have installed. Wish me luck. Hey, it's Patrick and welcome to the Garage Band Guide, where we're all about helping you master garage bands and improving your music. A quick proviso before we get started here, I don't have any plugins from Waves, Sound Toys or Melodyne Autotune. So if you're looking for compatibility info on any of those, sorry, I can't help. Finally, if you have a specific plugin that you want to check, you'll find timestamps for every plugin manufacturer mentioned down in the description. All right, let's do it. Okay, first on the list were three free plugins from Abletunes. They're Attack Knob, Drive Knob, and Space Knob. All three loaded up and worked with no issues at all. Next on the list was Akon Digital's Reverb Solo, a fantastic free reverb plugin. Again, loaded with no issues and worked flawlessly. So all of the Apple plugins that come with GarageBand, we know they're going to work. They were all updated to be Apple native along with GarageBand. No point testing them, they'll all work fine. Next on the list was Rough Rider 3, a free compressor plugin from the folks at Audio Damage. Once again, loaded up without a hitch, no problems at all, worked as expected. Next came Filter Step by Audio Modern, a great and unique filter step sequencer. Again, loaded without any issues, without a hitch at all, and worked perfectly. Filter Jam by Audio Thing was next on the list, and again, as seems to be the theme here, loaded with no issues and worked fine. Five plugins from Baby Audio were next, the first being Baby Come Back, their free, stripped down version of their excellent delay plugin, Come Back Kid. Loaded up with no issues and worked as expected. No problems at all. The same couldn't be said, unfortunately, for Comeback Kid itself, which actually caused GarageBand to crash and forced me to quit and restart the program. Very unfortunate, as Comeback Kid is fantastic. What's stranger is that all other plugins that I have installed from Baby Audio all loaded up and worked fine. The only one I had issues with was Comeback Kid. So there you are, Comeback Kid is the first plugin on the list that doesn't seem to work on M1 Max. So we're just going to skip over Bleas. I know there's an entry for it there, but I'm not allowed to show you or talk about it yet, unfortunately. So Blue Cat Audio, their excellent effects plugin Axiom, loaded up with no problems at all and worked flawlessly. Blue Cat's chorus, and in fact all of the plugins that come as part of their free plugin pack, all loaded and worked flawlessly. Blue Cat's destructor, again loaded up with no issues and worked perfectly. And Late Replies, Blue Cat's fantastic delay plugin, also worked as expected. Top Marks Blue Cat. 
Then on to Kalem Audio. Tape Cassette 2 and Tape Pro are the two plugins I have installed. I don't have a license for Tape Cassette 2, despite it being free. I'll need to go and dig that out. But it did load up and seemed to work normally. And Tape Pro, again, loaded up with no issues and worked normally. Focusrite were next on the list, and these two plugins, I believe, came free with an interface, I believe, the 2i4 that I bought a few years ago. Happy to report that both work flawlessly. Next up was Amplitude 4 from IK Multimedia, and yeah, it didn't go well. I was only getting sound from the left channel, no interface loaded up, and yeah, just didn't work, unfortunately. So Amplitude 4, unfortunately, doesn't seem to work on M1 Max. At least, not yet. Two plugins from Imaginando were next, DLYM and K7D. DLYM loaded up and worked exactly as expected as did K7D. Good stuff. Next on the list was Wider by Infected Mushroom and Polyverse. One of my favourite plugins, and not just because it's free, it sounds fantastic on anything you slap it onto, and works very well on M1 Max, apparently. Isotope was next, and there was quite a lot to get through here, so DDLY Dynamic Delay was first, loaded with no issues, and worked as expected. And that seemed to be the case for pretty much all of the Isotope plugins that I have installed. What's interesting here is that Isotope's Track Assistant, or Master Assistant function, depending on what plugin you're using, used to crash GarageBand on my old Intel Mac. It just wouldn't work. You'd hit Track Assistant button, it would get to a certain point, and then GarageBand would just crash. That isn't the case anymore. These Assistant features now work as expected in GarageBand on M1 Max. All of the Isotope plugins you see listed here worked with no issues, apart from RX7. None of these RX7 plugins would work, unfortunately, and again would force GarageBand to restart. So a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to Isotope plugins. Most of them seem to work fine, and in some cases, you're getting better functionality on M1 Max than on Intel Max. However, the RX7 line of plugins don't seem to be supported yet. All right, Klanghelm came next with DC1A3, IVG12, MJUC, and MJUC Junior. All of which loaded and worked with no problems. Next up were Clevgrind. Their free amp worked without any issues, as did Nor, Lux, Modley, Stark, and Svep. A clean sweep there for Clevgrind. Good stuff. Next came Lapu with their excellent amp sims. All of them loaded fine, all of them sounded great, and if you can still get a hold of these plugins, they'll work just fine on an M1 Mac. Next on the list was Bass Deluxe. Now, this is unique in that it is the only iOS and Mac universal app slash plugin. So you can buy this on your iOS device and use it on your iOS device, but also come onto your Mac, install it, and use it on your desktop as well. Sounds great and works with no problems. Next on the list was Melder Production and a huge number of free plugins that come as part of their free plugin bundle. All of these worked without any problems at all. I'll go through some of them here. But rest assured, if you download this bundle, every single plugin in it works on M1 Max without any issues. 
Next up on the list are some plugins from Michael Norris. I'm not sure if you can even still get these, to be honest. They don't have any user interface or anything like that. In fact, I think I downloaded them in about 2012 or something like that. However, they all load up fine and work absolutely as expected. Native Instruments were next with Guitar Rig 5 FX. Now the user interface for this plugin loaded up, however, it wouldn't allow me to click on any of the controls or really use it at all. So unfortunately, it looks like Guitar Rig 5 from Native Instruments just doesn't work on M1 Max. Reactor 6, however, did load up and was perfectly usable, as was Native Instruments Supercharger Compressor. Coming down the list now to Nimbrini Audio, where I have a whole lot of their free plugins installed. NA808 Overdrive Pro being the most recent, and it works exactly as you would expect. In fact, all of Nimbrini Audio's plugins worked without any problems at all. Next was Bias FX from Positive Grids, a all singing, all dancing guitar amp simulator, and it worked with no problems at all. Two filter plugins from Cinevibes were next on the list, Atom and Filter. And I'm happy to report that both worked flawlessly. A whole host of plugins from Tone Boosters was next, and all of them worked fine. Getting close to the bottom of the list now, and there were a couple of effect plugins from Uhi, the first one being Zebrafy. You may remember from my What Instrument Plugins Work on M1 Max video that the Uhi instruments worked with no issues at all, and it seems to be the same story with the effect plugins here. Next are three free plugins from Valhalla. Valhalla Frequency Echo, Valhalla Space Modulator, and one of my favourite plugins ever, Valhalla Supermassive. And I'm very happy to report that all three worked perfectly with no issues at all. And finally, Tubeamp from Voxengo was the last plugin on the list. And wouldn't you know it, it worked just fine. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised. With a few notable exceptions, pretty much everything worked as it should. Main standouts for me are Isotope's range of plugins, which GarageBand users can finally get full use of now. It's also great to see Mac and iOS universal apps starting to filter through, and hopefully we'll see more of those in the future. All right, is there a particular plugin or instrument that you're holding off buying one of these M1 machines for? Let me know down in the comments. If you're interested in seeing how third-party instruments like Spitfire Labs or Contact Player Fair on an M1 Mac, then click right here. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.